Good morning. Good morning. And may the temperature of right now be what we have this afternoon. I doubt it, but it's delightful out right now. Beautiful, sunny summer day. And we're privileged to come together and worship. Thanks be to God for his many blessings. Before we begin our service, just a couple of things to remind you. There is coffee after church downstairs. If you're free to stay, please do so. The Summer Fun for Children and Youth is in the bulletin again. Uh, first session is this week, and there's one in August, and you need to pre-register for that. So July 10th was for this past one, so we missed that. So watch the bulletin. There'll be a time to apply for the uh, August 14 Summertime Fun for the Kids. I think those are the announcements this morning. I would invite you to spend a few moments in silent preparation for worship. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Thanks be to God. As we begin our worship, let us come together with a unison call to worship from Psalm 33, sharing this together in unison. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. We try our love to us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Let's join together in the praise of God. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, who rules all creation. Let us praise God in music.
As we come to God, we come to God with our prayer of adoration and of confession. So let us pray together. Almighty God, you have made yourself known to us as Father, Son, and Spirit. Help us to understand your will and purpose for our lives this day. Jesus taught that we should ask, seek, and to knock. That is to lay before you our questions and concerns with the assurance that you would both hear and answer us. We praise you that you care so deeply for us, that you come very close to us and are intimately involved in all the concerns of our life. Lord, our lives are very often affected by the calendar. We're now in that summer season, the holiday time, the break time. So many of the normal activities within the church either go into slow mode or terminate until the fall. But keep us ever mindful that you do not take a holiday from us, and we must not take one from you. Keep us faithful in Christian living and in regular worship here and while we're away. Lord, we today seek your forgiveness, for we acknowledge that we have failed to do certain things that we have ought to have done, and either being aware or unaware have disobeyed your revealed will. Grant to us your gracious forgiveness. In the words of the hymn we pray, draw me nearer, 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 precious Lord, that we might walk increasingly in the way of righteousness and peace and harmony. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this. Amen. Jesus knows our every weakness and still loves us. Awaken to the promise of forgiveness and life in Christ. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. And so we sing, O oh, praise the name and praise his holy name.
thankful for. We've just been in our new house for two and a half months or something like that. When we first saw it, it was still winterish, it was February, and there was nothing happening in the yard, it looked rather empty. But we moved in in April and increasingly there's a flower here, there's a bunch there. The beauty all over the yard of the flowers of God's creation. Thank God for the wonderful creation. Wherever we look, we see the handiwork of God, the beauty and the precision of what he has made for us. So I say thank God for that. What are you thankful for? I want to hear from you. I'll repeat it so we can be heard. Nobody's thankful for anything. <laughs> Pardon? Thankful for another day. And yes, our church and our congregation, we are blessed in this way. What else? Thank you for the wonderful gathering on Thursday. And I've been looking at the banners. I praise God from whom all blessings flow, fill our hearts with joy. Yeah, the, the referring to was the gathering of the ladies. What, 35 you said were there in Joan's place? Uh, a great time was had, and we thank God for that opportunity of fellowship together. It's so important. What else is you're thankful for? Thankful you can see God's beauty. Yes, the gift of sight. For family. Mm -hmm. Grandchildren. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, family, brothers, sisters, the whole gamut. Thank God for our families. How blessed we are. Beauty of nature. The beauty of nature. Yes, the beauty around us. Friends. Friends. Friends, yes. Thank God for friends. How blessed we are. Now, as we think of all these things and a million other things, that's cause for praise. To praise God for what he has given us. Praise means to, wow, God, that's so wonderful. In gratitude, we say, thank you, Lord. That's the praise we offer to God. And one of the things I'd like you to do this week is think again and again of the things that you are thankful for and praise God for those. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Now, part of the blessing of the Lord is his word, and we turn now to the scriptures, and I would ask you to hear, first of all, the prayer of illumination, and then we will proceed with the response of Psalm and the reading from Ephesians. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for the living word, Jesus Christ, and for the written word which bears witness to Jesus Christ and his work for us. How great, O oh Lord, are your works. How wonderful it is to worship together and to have your printed word. So as we turn to it now, speak to our hearts. Grant us understanding and blessing from what is printed there in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. The response of Psalm from Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are all your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth falls down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to you. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and let me tell you what he has done for me. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. The God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God.
Paul opens his letter to the Ephesians with a remarkable list of God's blessings. Ephesians 1, 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle, I, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. He predestined us for adoption to worship to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Have you ever tried to smile and frown at the same time? Have you ever seen a radiant expression on a glum face? Sometimes, I guess, we Presbyterians have been accused of being kind of straight-laced and not very energetic in our worship or whatever. But in all we do, in our personal lives, in our worship, one thing is the hallmark, and that is this, to make a joyful noise to God all the earth, sing the glory of his name, give his glorious praise. The book of Psalms is filled with affirmations of praise to God. Over and over again we read praise, praise, praise. Now if people living a thousand years or so before the coming of Christ had reason to praise God, we have more. For we have come and have seen Jesus the Christ and have been called to life in him. We have been received the precious gift of forgiveness and the pledge of eternal life. For all time and eternity, we are God's chosen people. And he walks with us each day in the presence of the Spirit. So in our worship and personal lives, we need to make a joyful noise to the Lord. From the reading from Ephesians, I want to share with you several precious truths, blessings, that God has bestowed upon us that should cause us to sing and rejoice and praise him. The biblical understanding of praise is to express profound thanks and praise for what he has done for us. Gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Now each of the blessings that Paul lists in Ephesians merit many a sermon but I simply want to highlight them this morning, that you can see this package unfolding of what God has done for us 
Paul began, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And then he goes on to list some of those blessings. He starts off and says, God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Here we have the doctrine of election, that God is the initiator who chooses us to be his people. And we must place this in the context of human sin. God chose to love us, sinners as we are. Jesus said to his disciples, you didn't choose me, I chose you. In the Old Testament, we see that doctrine of election very clearly with Jeremiah. We read in Jeremiah, God said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. There's the first blessing, that God has not ignored us or written us off because of our sin, but has taken the initiative in calling us to himself. God chose us. And Paul carries on from this, saying that God has predestined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ. Here we have two concepts, predestination and adoption. Now there's been a lot of misunderstanding about this word predestination, which the dictionary defines as determining beforehand what is going to happen. So it is said that God predestines certain people and works in them to bring them to faith in Christ. And flowing from this is the concept that those not saved are predestined to eternal hell. This is called double predestination, a delightful doctrine. God consigns some to heaven and some to hell. What is meant to be a very profound and uplifting concept, predestination, has been interpreted far too narrowly and incorrectly, I believe. So I want to share with you a very helpful of pre definition of predestination. Predestination is the effectual working out of God's will for humankind. Predestination is the effectual working out of God's will for humankind. God brings to pass what he plans to do from all eternity. If God has called you, he has predestined you, and in the process he brings you to faith in Christ. Salvation is all of grace. The truth is we are all deserving of judgment, but God in mercy calls people to himself. Peter stated these great words, the Lord is patient with you, not wanting that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Paul affirmed God has predestined, he's working out his will in us for adoption as his children. Scripture is full of analogies which seek to help us understand our relationship with God and with one another. One concept is God is the Father and we are his children, the household of faith, brothers and sisters in Christ. Sin separates us from God and from one another. But God brings us into his family. He adopts us as his precious children. Now in our society, an adopted child has all the rights and privileges and inherits of natural children. And by grace, we are members of God's family. Didn't deserve it, but God chose to call us. He predestined us and he leads us to be part of his family. Jesus said, remember, you didn't choose me, I chose you, that you should bear much fruit. So with the privilege of salvation, we have the responsibility of being used by God to bring others to Christ. We might bear fruit for him, that others might be blessed through us. So in this sense, we are agents of God's predestination, for predestination is the working out of God's will, and he chooses to use us to reach others. Paul continues, In Christ we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins. In the Old Testament, the word redemption bears the context of to deliver, to sever. And one of the great examples of that, of course, is the deliverance of the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt. God severed that bond and left them to be a free people. And in the New Testament, the word redemption implies a loosing, a freeing, which is brought with a penalty, it was paid for by a price. A person could redeem a slave, for example, by paying a price to the owner, and that slave became free. So in our relationship with God, one of his precious blessings is redemption, the freeing of us from the guilt and power and punishment of sin. And the price God paid for this was very costly. It was a cross. Christ is our Redeemer, paying the price of our freedom, enduring our hell. Hallelujah. What a Savior. And the obvious implication of this is that we are a forgiven people. And the weight of guilt before God, of our disobedience of him, and of our abuse of other people, God has said, I forgive you. What blessed words, called, included in his family, forgiven. Paul went on to another blessing. He's made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he set forth in Christ as a time for the fullness of time. He had a plan for the fullness of time. Now, there are times when many people feel life rather confusing at best, plagued by repetition, listlessness, purposelessness. Life seems to be going nowhere for some people, caught up in dead-end jobs, poor marriages, unhappiness in family relationships. Life can appear to be just simply going in circles, constant repetition of activity, but nothing really is accomplished. But Paul affirms that God has a plan, and we're included in that plan, to lead us through this life into all eternity. That life is not cyclical, it's not dead end, but it's alive in Christ and leads throughout our whole of life. He has a plan for us and he gradually reveals his will to us. I think one of the answers to our purpose in life is found in the Shorter Catechism, that our chief purpose in life is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Not for today or tomorrow or next week, but to glorify God and enjoy him forever. In God's time, Christ will return. This is part of that will and plan of his and establish his eternal kingdom. And we'll be part of that. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and are left will be caught up in the clouds to meet them with the Lord. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Our life in Christ is part of his plan for time and eternity both individually and corporately. We are his for all time and eternity. Praise God, what a blessing. Paul said, we have obtained an inheritance. As we look back in the Old Testament, the concept of an inheritance linked with Israel being God's special people, his chosen people. Their blessing was to be his people. And he expected his people to obey and to share with other nations who God is. The great responsibility of sharing their faith. Now we too have an inheritance in Christ. We are part of his eternal kingdom. Pope Peter said, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that you might proclaim the mighty acts of him who calls you out of darkness into his marvelous life. 
we have inherited the kingdom of God. We are part of his people. And we then have that responsibility by word and action to share our faith, our knowledge, our love with other people. And the final blessing that Paul mentions is this. We were marked by the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. The Oriental custom at scriptural time was to place a mark on the skin as a symbol of a person's God or the consecration of that purpose. To the Jew, the mark was circumcision. The mark for the Christian is baptism. It symbolizes a person becoming a Christian, therefore receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit so that at all times and situations, he or she would experience God's presence. This is true for each one of us, that we have been blessed by the Spirit of God working in our lives he brings people to salvation and then he helps mature and develop them. When we became Christians, we received that gift of the Spirit. Never alone, God is always with us. We should be more and more aware of God's presence as we spend time reading his word and prayer, thankful for what he has done for us, that we have been baptized in Christ. We are his forgiven, chosen people. Well, that's quite a list. God has blessed his people with the gift of election, predestination, adoption, redemption, forgiveness, hope, eternal security, and the abiding presence of God's Spirit. Now that's cause for a holy party. Praise God and his church. Praise God in the streets. Praise God at work. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And all the people said, Amen. Amen indeed. So we sing to God be the glory, great things he has done.
And now, as an expression of our thanks to God, we would present our morning offering, asking that God would take these, our gifts, and use them to the praise of his glory in Jesus the Christ. And as we receive our offering, let us join in seeing Lord of all power. so many of them in so many different ways, except these are gifts of our time, of our money, of our abilities. Use us, we pray, in the service of Christ. Praise be to your name. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer. We marvel at your goodness to us. First on our list of gratitude is thanksgiving for our salvation in Christ. We by grace are a forgiven people. We praise you that we are not alone as Christians, but part of the great community of your people, the church. We thank you, Lord, for challenges that come to us that stimulate us and for situations that make us pause and reflect and think and plan and act. We thank you for your enabling presence that we might face the challenging and the troubling times. We are a blessed people. And you have taught us to be concerned for others and we now lay before you our prayers of intercession. We uphold this week who walk in the valley of darkness. Many are plagued by various forms of addiction. Some suffer prolonged reaction to grief. Lord, we want to walk with those who struggle. Be thee known to us as strangers. Open doors of opportunity for us to render love, compassion, support, and care. We also rejoice in those who have been richly blessed with renewed health, with, with success in their endeavors, with lights, with blessings. So today we would weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And Lord, we would pray for the congregation of First Church in New Westminster as a result of the fire on July 4th. We pray that things will move along quickly in the process of restoration, that you would guide the congregation in the steps that they need to take. Lord, hear our prayers, for we offer them in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise, I will praise you, Lord. Let us join in joyful singing together. day of this week. Pause to think of the blessings that God has given you and give thanks to him. Give praise to him. Great is our God, greatly to be praised. And as you go therefore, may grace, mercy and truth from God the Father, God the Son and God the Spirit be with each of you each day of this week. Amen.